Good evening. My name is Reese Badenock, and I'm a teacher here at Golden Secondary School. It is my privilege to be master of ceremony for tonight's celebration. I would like to begin. To, uh, I would like to begin proceedings tonight by acknowledging that we are on the traditional territory of the Tanaha and Sequatchie people, and that Golden is also known as a crossover territory for many other First Nations people and Métis. We are privileged to live and work in such a beautiful place. At this time, please welcome the 2021 graduating class of Golden Secondary School as they enter the gymnasium. GSS choir member Angelina Timmis performs with Canada for us this evening. Thank you, Angelina. Graduates of 2021, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Golden Secondary School's 2021 graduation ceremony. You can all take a seat. We are gathered here to celebrate the accomplishments, perseverance, and effort that have enabled these students to be seated here before you tonight. We are also here to wish the graduating class continued success in the exciting futures that await them. For the past five years, these students have worked diligently to achieve one goal of graduating. Whether they excelled in academics, sports, industrial arts, fine arts, or other activities, each of these individuals has grown and expanded their horizons during their time at Golden Secondary. We take the time tonight to recognize their achievements as they prepare for the next chapter of their lives. What makes tonight even more special is the fact that these graduates have completed their final year during 
the most difficult and challenging school year in history. Their dedication and perseverance and, re and resilience during the most trying of times deserves recognition and to be rewarded. It is our hope that you begin the next chapter of your lives under more relaxed, normal circumstances. You have certainly earned it. We know, that we know that your parents and families are disappointed in not being able to be here this evening to share this moment, but we also know how proud of each and every one of them they are, you, they are. and they wish you all the best for your future. I would now like to call upon Ms. Kelsey Dollar, Principal of Golden Secondary School, to come forward to give her commencement address. Graduates of 2021, tonight represents a special achievement. Each and every one of you are here tonight by the determination and effort you have put forth along your journey towards graduation. Though each of you, of your paths look different, they all led you here to this moment, and for this we celebrate. Your families, the community, your teachers, the support staff, we have seen you all grow in so many ways over the course of your years with us. From the moment you first entered the doors of Golden Secondary School to this moment where you will walk across the stage, you have worked hard to become who you are meant to be. Your journey through high school concluded in the midst of a pandemic and by no means was this ideal. Nevertheless, you still made the best of it and most likely grew far more as a result. There are certain areas of growth that I have seen in you all and that I would like to highlight. I believe that these will serve you well and will be a gift to those who surround you. The first is that of patience, learning from home, having to quarantine, making plans that for the umpteenth time were blown up because COVID reared its ugly head. If you didn't consider yourself patient before, you can now. Over the past two years, things were taken away from you that should never be taken away from a high school experience. Field trips, community experiences, athletic programs, the list goes on. You demonstrated patience with your families, your peers, your teachers, your administration, as everyone navigated this new reality. Your patience and flexibility did not go unnoticed and was valued. And that brings us to the next of hope and the ability to hold on to hope. There is so much value in hope. Your ability to hold on to that hope despite how grim the horizon may look is important. Due to the pandemic, you've had a lot of practice with this. You all face challenges, struggles, dark days over the past two years. Regardless of just how big that mountain was that you had to climb, you knew the peak was there and you continued to climb. You got here, you made it. With hope, you were able to manage frustration, anxiety, stress that may have plagued you. Continue to always have hope because change is always possible and the best is yet to come. That brings us to perseverance. We can all agree that through the last years, the last year and a half, you have all learned what it means to persevere. The ability to persevere when times get tough is not easy. It takes grit and determination. Not only should you be proud for getting to this point, but by doing so with poise and dedication. Lastly, I hope you carry forward your gratitude. Despite all the challenges that you have faced this past year, I admire your ability to look on the bright side of things. Your ability to find goodness in the present moment will serve you well. Gratitude enables you to acknowledge the goodness in your life. In turn, this helps you recognize a source outside of yourself and helps you to appreciate the importance of our connectedness to the world around us. 
Gratitude can make any dire situation feel a bit better, and it will always help you get through more trying times. When I look at each of you in front of me right now, I am filled with hope. Wherever you choose to go, you will have an impact on the world around you, and I truly feel that each and every one of you have the potential to make a difference in the world around us in which we live. So thank you, graduates, for growing in patience, for having hope, for persevering, and at, end, at the end of the day, for showing gratitude. This moment marks the end of high school, but it also represents the beginning of what is yet to come. We at Golden Secondary School wish you all the best. Thank you, Ms. Dolba. At this time, I'd like to present a video message from Ms. Karen Shipka, Superintendent of Rocky Mountain School District. Graduates, parents, honored guests, and staff. My name is Karen Shipka, and I am the Superintendent of Schools for Rocky Mountain School District Number 6. It is a great privilege to address you today on behalf of the Board of Education and the staff of Rocky Mountain School District. Today is your day. Tomorrow, you will take the first steps on your next journey. Some of you have undoubtedly already planned what you will do next, while others are just getting started. And that's okay. Take time, plan well, dream big, and follow your passions. This year has been unlike any other. One thing that I've learned from this global pandemic is that attributes like resiliency and conscientiousness are just as important to your success as academic skill. This year, each of you has developed these attributes, and they will serve you well in the many situations you will face. When you start your first career, and some of you will have many, you will learn that employers won't ask you about your test scores what they are interested in knowing about you is what kind of person you are. Are you reliable? Are you a hard worker? Are you open to other viewpoints? These are all qualities that each of you has already developed. They are the values that you learn from your parents and the community you grew up in. Your teachers have armed you with the knowledge and skills to be successful. Today is your day to celebrate. Tomorrow, go forward and choose your path. Choose to learn and grow from failures because it is those moments that teach us the most. On behalf of Rocky Mountain School District 6, I want to wish each of you health, happiness, and success in whatever you choose to do and be. Thank you and congratulations. You health, happiness, and success in whatever you choose to do and be. Thank you and congratulations. I would, like, I would now like to invite Ms. Dola to come forward to begin the presentations. She will be assisted by Ms. Pam Roderick and by Ms. Rebecca Pilon from the Golden Alternate. Graduates, as your name is called, please come to the left side of the stage and then exit on the right side over there. A reminder, please remove your mask as you arrive on the stage and put it back on when you return to your seat. The scholarships and bursaries being presented tonight are awarded to our graduates who will be pursuing post-secondary study, and these awards are based on very criteria including academic excellence, athleticism, community service, and financial need. All 2021 graduates who completed the scholarship and bursary application with Mr. Wilson will be receiving an envelope this evening reminding them that they are eligible to receive the Henry M. Duran Bursary and the Eugene and Irene LaRue Memorial Bursary. 
Both of these funds are managed by the Golden and District Community Foundation. The 2021 graduates extend a heartfelt thank you to all members of the community and the Columbia Valley who generously donated over $60,000 towards furthering their future dreams and aspirations. Our first graduate tonight is Adrian Acton, graduating with honors. Adrian is receiving a Parent Advisory Council bursary. His plan is to live without regret and try food from around the world. Adam Archibald will be receiving a dual diploma having successfully completed the French Immersion Program with honors. Adam's future plan is to study in the Kinesiology Program at College of the Rockies and pursue a career as an NHL official. Adam is receiving multiple bursaries tonight. He is one of the recipients of the Goldman District Minor Hockey uh, Sportsmanship Bursary. Adam is also receiving the Keith King Memorial Bursary, St. Paul's Anglican Church Bursary, Golden Rotary Club, Canadian Parents for French, Town of Golden, and the SD6 Administrator's Bursary. Devern Brock. Having arrived at Golden Secondary School in February of this year, Devern Brock is being presented with his graduation folder. His plan is to live a happy and successful life. He would like to thank everyone for their friendship and support. Aidan Broderick. Aidan is graduating with honors. Aidan is being presented with the SD6 Golden Administrator's Bursary and the first of four Golden Teachers Association bursaries. He is also receiving the Golden Golf Club bursary this evening. His future plan is to make money. <laughs> William Cooper. He is receiving the Golden Rotary and District Authority bursary. And his future plans, he says, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Jonah Craig. Jonah is graduating with honors. His future plans is to have a sick life. <laughs> Jonah is receiving the Golden Rod and Gun Club bursary, as well as a Golden Rotary bursary. He is also receiving the Friends of Yoho scholarship this evening. Matthew Dawes. Matthew is going to the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology to study welding. Ethan Elliott Fenn. <laughs> he is being presented tonight with a Louisiana Pacific bursary. He plans on having a gap year next year. Jasmine Gap, graduating with honors. She is receiving the second of four Golden Teachers Association bursaries. She is also the recipient of the Golden Chamber of Commerce, Louisiana Pacific Trades, and Rotary Bursary. She has also received the Columbia Basin Trust Youth Community Service Award this evening. She plans to go to Gustafson School of Business at the University of Victoria and then hopefully have a career in fashion industry. Ryan Ginn. Ryan has completed his requirements through the College of the Rockies. Congratulations, Ryan. Cecilia Graham. Graduating with honors. 
Sincerely, we'd like to thank everyone for their friendship and support. Ava Grattan. Ava is receiving a scholarship from the Canadian Mountain Holidays. She plans to go to the College of the Rockies to do the tourism management course. Paige Hagel. Paige plans to live a happy and successful life. She would like to thank everyone for their friendship and support. Haley Tress. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Ashley Tress. I am so sorry. <laughs> Ashley is receiving a bursary from the Columbia Valley Credit Union. Ms. Pilon congratulates her on getting it done and is pleased to offer a Golden Alternate School bursary. Jazreet Kaur, graduating with honors. Jazreet is receiving the Kicking Horse Cultural Contribution and Rotary Bursaries. She is also receiving one of the Rocky Mountain School District 6 bursaries. She would like to thank everyone for their friendship and support. Sophie Kilty, graduating with honors. Sophie is receiving the Amman Verk Memorial, MCOM, and QB440 bursary. She plans on attending the University of Lethbridge. Saren Kepke. Saren plans to continue to build her nail business and, and eventually become certified. Kathleen Lammers. <laughs> Kathleen will be receiving a dual diploma having successfully completed the French Immersion Program. Kathleen is also receiving the Golden Volunteer Firefighters Association and the Atma Sander Volunteer Recognition Bursary this evening. Ella Marie Lane, graduating from <laughs> Ella Marie will be receiving a dual diploma, having successfully completed the French Immersion Program. She has been awarded one of the district authority bursaries along with the Kicking Horse Cultural Contribution, Legion Branch 122, and Physicians of Golden bursaries. She is planning to go to the University for Art and Psychology and is also hoping to drop out and play in a band. Haley Mastriani, graduating with honors. <laughs> Haley is receiving one of the RCMP bursaries tonight. Haley's future plans include traveling the world, making bank, and enjoying every moment of her life. Keisha Matthews. <laughs> Ms. Pilon congratulates Keisha and is pleased to offer her a golden alternate bursary. Sydney McLean, graduating with honors. Sydney is receiving a dual diploma, having successfully completed the French Immersion Program. She has been nominated for the BC Excellence Medal. She will also be receiving the QP440, Golden Rotary Club, Golden Legion Branch 122, Golden Run and, Rod and Gun Club, and positions of Golden Bursary. She is also one of the recipients of the CBT Youth Community Service Awards. 
Her future plans are to attend the UBCO in the fall of 2021 to pursue a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. She also hopes to explore the world as a travel nurse and make memories along the way. Grayson Mitzel. Grayson plans to have a happy and successful life. He would like to thank everyone for their friendship and support. Congratulations, Grayson. Carson Hoddy, graduating with honors. Carson is receiving one of the RCMP bursaries along with the Columbia Valley Credit Union bursary. His future plans is to pursue a career in law enforcement. Kale Osborne. Kale returned to Golden in February to graduate tonight from Golden Secondary after the Thompson Blazers hockey season was canceled. Kale is a recipient of the Golden Teachers Association and East Kootenai and District Labor Council bursary. Madison Oslo. Madison is receiving one of the RCP bursaries, along with the Jen Cusworth Memorial Bursary. Madison plans on attending Thompson River University in the fall to be a social worker. Mara Parkinson, graduating in honors. Mayor is receiving a dual diploma having completed the French Immersion Program. She is also the recipient of one of the four Golden Legion Branch 122 bursaries. Mayor is planning to take a year off to travel around BC in her van. Rianne Pelche. Rianne came to Golden from Calgary this past year. Rihanna is receiving one of the Parent Advisory Council bursaries, as well as a Golden RCMP bursary. Kobe Porter, great way to go. Kobe will be receiving a dual diploma having successfully completed the French Immersion Program. Kobe is a recipient of one of the Golden Rotary Club bursaries, Kobe plans to attend LaSalle College in Vancouver and hopes to become a game designer. Additionally, he has decided that he wants to travel to Japan to see the cherry blossoms. Happy birthday. Cameron Popman, graduating with honors. Cameron is receiving bursaries from the Golden Hospital Auxiliary, Leo Club, and GSS alumni. Her future plans are to register with the College of the Rockies and study to be a healthcare assistant. Arvind Rana, graduating with honors. Arvind is one of the recipients of the Golden and District Minor Hockey Sportsmanship Bursary and the Golden Golf Club Bursary. Arvin plans to become a heavy duty mechanic. Alina Raposo, graduating with honors. <laughs> Alina has been awarded the Golden Bakery, the Golden Bakery Student Leadership Bursary. Her plan is to take a year off to make some bank and then head to university for a bachelor in social work. If that does not work out. She'll be running away to Mexico. Caleb Brevet, graduating with honors. <laughs> Caleb arrived in Golden this year from Langley. Caleb is receiving the Columbia Power Corporation bursary this year. Callum Rohrbach Sajani.
Callan is receiving one of the Golden Ossian P bursaries. Ryla Shaka, graduating from this. Ryla is receiving a District Authority bursary, a Golden Rod and Gun Club bursary, and one of the Golden Ossian, Golden Ossian P bursaries. Ryla has also been awarded the Terra Juvenile Memorial Bursary. This bursary is awarded to a student who has demonstrated le leadership and excellence in athletics, notably figure skating and soccer. Ryla plans to travel the world. Caleb Sinclair Hobbs. Caleb is receiving the fourth and final Golden Teachers Association bursary. Caleb is also receiving the Walter Bell Memorial Lions Scholarship, along with the Golden Rotary Club and Golden Legion Branch 122 bursaries. Caleb plans on attending university in the fall. Isaac Tetra. Isaac is receiving a dual diploma, having completed the French Immersion Program. He is also being awarded the Columbia Valley Credit Union and Future Contractors Bursary. Isaac plans on being a free agent. Alexis Sidilis. Alexis is receiving one of the District Authority bursaries. Alexis is also the recipient of the Golden Rotary Club and Kicking Us Cultural Contribution bursaries. Her future plans include attending university and then going to med school. Lexi plans on becoming a cosmetic plastic surgeon and open up a practice in cities all around the world. If that doesn't work, she'll become a economist. Morgan Watson. Morgan is receiving the Columbia Valley Credit Union Bursary this evening. Morgan will be attending the University of Lethbridge in the fall. And our final 2021 graduate to be recognized this evening is honor roll student Jasmine Wilson. Tonight, Jasmine is receiving the GSS Youth Legacy Scholarship and the GSS Spirit Bursary. Jasmine plans on attending the University of Lethbridge and a major in computer science. Congratulations to all our graduates this year. Every year, the graduating class chooses a member of the staff or community to come and provide them with some inspirational words of wisdom. This year, the grad class is proud to call upon Mr. Steve Benton. Let's see what we can do. Look what you just pulled off tonight, everyone. I'm really proud of you. You'll probably hear that repeatedly, but I mean it. So it's not much of a stretch for me to be here in the gym with you. It's like being home, isn't it? Welcome, parents, 
family, friends, school district staff, and of course the graduates of 2021. My name is Steve Benty, a long-standing teacher here at GSS. Graduates, I'd like you to not think about the lost opportunities that could not happen in 2021, but to concentrate that you're here tonight without any loss of school days in your graduation year. We're here safe and sound, and that is what I want you to focus on tonight. I would like, to, like you to enjoy each other's company together as a class and in our school for the last time and know that we are all proud of you. It is truly an honor to speak my final words tonight to you as one of your teachers. It is my hope I am standing here now because we had some fun together. At some point in your five years here, throughout your time, you've been working to demonstrate solid communication, creative, critical, and reflective thinking, as well as personal and social responsibility. On most days, I saw all of these strengths. On some days, I saw nothing of the sort. <laughs> a class could start upside down and stay that way, and we all left with nothing but a good laugh, me included on that, and maybe even the cause of that. Depending on the day, I have sometimes seen students enter the gym drenched in tears. I have also seen students blasting into the gym wrapped in joy, ready to play a championship game, or have the workout of the century. I feel I've seen many extremes just in my corner of the school alone. I am glad to have gone through this with you, and I wouldn't have wanted to miss a thing. It is my hope that you have left here feeling that you, are, that you were heard and cared for every day as you walk through our school and into all of our classes. I have seen many employees come and go here at our school, educational assistants, teachers, vice principals, principals, and superintendents, who share their farewells and dispense a little parting advice to sum up their careers. What is mentioned at the very end is not new curriculum standards, technology upgrades, or effective teaching methods. It has always ended with, with what they felt most important in their careers, which was to have connection and healthy relationships with one another as the key to success. This is what they felt made their life and career rewarding and fulfilling. So same with you as you walk out these doors. What will you remember for mostly from your time here? Many years from now, you will remember your school relationships with us and each other. I think we all look back and think, if we could just change a few things, what would that be? Probably how we treated people and how much control we have over this and the value of this. Don't discredit the power of resolution and a little compromise when you need to. The people that you know well, the people you are about to end 12 years of schooling with, keep them close and in your sphere of influence. They will understand you. They will probably know you better than any boss or, ed or most working colleagues in the future. They can be a pillar of strength if you go through tough times. So don't lose them. I have watched you in class, fields, in the hallways and in the forum. You've already experienced the fulfillment of relationships. In you, in you I saw fun, polite young people and I enjoyed all of our conversations. The school created an inspirational code of conduct, an acronym to grasp onto, ROCKS. Respectful, organized, caring, kind, and safe. This is a great recipe to nurture your relationships now and in the future. So I hope you take this along with you. As we emerge from this past year, many things will return to normal and many things will change. As you enter the workforce or attend post-secondary education, you will be playing a part in society that is critical in how life will unfold. There will be some challenges and it is my hope you embrace them and be open to change. It's easy to throw out that line on grad night, you are the future and not put a lot of thought into it. Perhaps adults can easily say this while we are still in a position of power and in charge of most things. But when I look out there now, I see our past graduates as physicians, mechanics, accountants, physio and massage therapists, nutritionists, plumbers, nurses, bookkeepers, artists, librarians, business owners, and basically everything. On many occasions, I now receive direct help from them. 
so they were and are very much part of my future. In this case, I hope when I see you again, and in your role, it will always be a happy reunion. Before you leave tonight, it seems fitting that I should give you a little present after 12 years of work. You don't have to answer my skill testing question or win a competition. It is my final prize for graduating. Can you guess what that may be? Get it out the door, everyone. Thank you for being good listeners and stay in touch. Wasn't that sweet? Thank you, Mr. Betty. That was beautiful. I would like to invite Ms. Dollar back to the stage to begin our awards presentation. The recipient of tonight's awards have, been, have had their names added to the trophies you see displayed before you. Each winner will also be receiving a small plaque to take home. A reminder that the winners will have the opportunity to have their photos taken with the awards and trophies at the end, but the trophies must remain in school. These awards are normally given out at the end of year award celebrations with students and parents. We hope this continues next year. Our first, our first award tonight is the Senior Athletics Award. The top Senior Athletics Award Award is a grade 12 students that have consistently shown excellence in athletics during their time in GSS. The recipients exemplify what is meant to be a team player and consistently display good sportsmanship. It was challenging this year as we haven't had sports in almost 18 months, but I'm happy to award the top senior male athlete to Ethan Elliott Fenn. Top senior female athlete, Sydney McLean. The Tom King Senior Citizenship Award. The King family is one of the original families in Golden. Tom King had a distinguished career and was a strong community leader. These awards are given in memory of Tom King to outstanding citizens of our school. When we think of citizenship, we think about positive role models, someone who is empathetic and genuine, provides leadership, has integrity, has high expectations of themselves and others, leads by example, and who stands up for what is right. Our junior and senior Tom King Citizenship Awards go to students who exemplify all of these. It is our pleasure to announce this year's winner of the Senior Tom King Citizen Award to Adam Archibald. The top scholastic achievement awards are presented to the students in each grade who completes the year with the highest grade point average. This award is presented on behalf of the school district six trustees. The recipients also receive a check for $100 and a gift certificate to back his books. The awards for grade eight through 11 were presented earlier this week. However, we would like to take a moment to acknowledge each of the winners. In grade eight, we had Evelyn Hunter, Grade 9, Ella Joven. Grade 10, Georgia Gale. Grade 11, Emmy Abbs. 
Congratulations to each of these recipients. Now it is time to recognize this year's Grade 12 recipient. This year's Grade 12 Sco Top Scholastic Award goes to Jasmine Gap. Jasmine will also be the recipient of the Governor's Generals Award. <laughs> the Principal's Award goes to a grade 12 student who is exemplary in many areas. This year's recipient is known for her citizenship, academic growth mindset, and strong work ethic. This person is also hardworking, compassionate, and well-liked by, by her fellow students. I am pleased to announce that this year's Principal Award goes to Jazreed Cole. Our final award tonight is the Top All-Round Student Award, which is given to a grade 12 student who excels in multiple areas, including academics, athletics, school spirit and community involvement. This year's recipient has shown consistent leadership in all areas and is a great ex example of what it's meant to be a top all-round student. I am very pleased to announce this year's recipient is Sydney McLean. The valedictorian is nominated by members of the graduation class and is looked up to by others. This student is an active member in the school and community and strives to make both a better place. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome this year's valedictorian, Adam Archibald. Fellow grads, good evening. My name is Adam Archbold, and I am grateful and honored to be chosen as the valedictorian for the GSS graduating class of 2021. It is hard to believe that we are already at this stage in our lives and preparing to take maybe the biggest leap we have ever taken. We went from being immature grade eights to still being immature grade twelves, just a little bit taller. Before I begin my speech, I would like to say a huge thank you to our families, our school staff, and everyone else who helped us to reach this point. Without you, none of this would have been possible, especially under such unusual circumstances. While there are many cliches that describe high school, and many scenarios that I could use to describe what we went through, I found inspiration from the little puzzle piece in the corner of my computer screen. A puzzle seemed like the perfect analogy to use for a speech like this because it describes high school perfectly. It's something that seems unsolvable at first, like the pre-calc 12 textbooks, but as you progress through it, the pieces fall into place and everything slowly starts to make sense. I don't know about the rest of you, but when I was younger and somebody gave me a speech, or gave me a puzzle, I was super excited to get started. But, like all good challenges, you can't just jump into it right away. We had to get a feel for the pieces and find the corners of the puzzles that we had a place to start, just like when we entered the school in grade eight. Now, as we got more into the puzzle, we found that we were easily distracted by what other people were doing. 
We wanted to try out things that they were doing rather than staying focused on the tasks that we needed to get done. I'm sure we can all remember those grade nine science tests that we chose not to study for, and then we regretted that decision shortly after. Despite distractions, and maybe even because of them, we were able to find those edges. We were able to appreciate the challenges, school, work, family, and friends, we were about to face. While it seemed like a bigger puzzle than we had planned for, we didn't shy away from it, and we found encouragement from others. So while we had lots of fun at this stage, and tried new things with other people, we knew that life was about to get serious, and while it was scary, it was also exciting. With the frame completed, the next part of the puzzle was boring, kind of. The obvious parts are finished, but the details that hold everything together are still coming. It's that awkward stage after grade nine where you know that you need to start getting things ready for the hard part, a career and a life after grad. But then there's the other part of you that just wants to go back to having some fun and not thinking too much about the final stages. You put some of the pieces together, but you don't put them into the puzzle just yet because you need to make sure that they go together just like they're shown in the picture. And then the biggest thing happens at this stage, panic attacks. You worry, you worry about what's coming, you worry about what other people think about you, and you worry that you made a mistake at one point, just like in that grade 10 final where you thought you did all right, but you actually didn't. And then you realize the stress will be there for grade 11 and grade 12, and that makes you worry even more. However, after you've finished worrying, you start to get everything together. You start to find the key pieces that you will need to succeed, and then you change your mind at course selection. And while it might not be close to done yet, and you find it frustrating at times, you are seeing that the end is near, and starting to build that anticipation for what will come next. You're still missing some pieces that will prevent you from finishing, but you get close. Eventually, you get to the last part, and you start to become impatient. Why isn't it coming together? How long does this take to do? And is it really worth finishing when I could probably be doing better things with my life right now? But you persist, and you get the final bits over with. You persevere, and you're happy that you've accomplished almost all of your high school goals. Now, you're ready to relax and go hang out, until your friend shows up with their mask, standing six feet away from the door, and gives you a new puzzle, be that a new job, college or university, moving, whatever it be. And that puzzle is a thousand pieces instead of a hundred. Oh, and they make you pay an outrageous price for it. But since you're desperate for something to do in quarantine, you pay them anyways, and then you go sanitize the box. Um, yeah, I can't, COVID-19 has pretty much scarred us for life. So, as we wrap up our high school experience and move on to new things in life, it is important to remember the things that it took to get you to this point. The difficult moments that made you reflect on what you were doing and why you were doing it. The challenges that we encountered in high school that made us who we are today and stronger than we would have been without them. To quote Michael Jordan, obstacles don't have to stop you. If you run into a wall, don't turn around and give up. Figure out how to climb it, go through it, or work around it. So even though you will encounter a number of challenges along your way to success, I hope that you enjoy the next puzzle and remember the things that brought you success from previous obstacles. Cherish the moments that you may have hated before and keep a positive mindset on the whole experience. Because once you finish your first puzzle, there's always another just around the corner. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. As any graduating class will tell you, everyone's shorter than me. Their years in high school have been filled with both positive and sometimes not so positive experiences. Regardless of those experiences, regardless, those experiences have helped them shape them into the young adults they are today. It falls upon the job of the class historians to take those experiences, reflect upon them, and try and make sense of them. Please welcome the class historians of 2021 grad class, Alexis Sedillis and Aidan Broderick. Thank you. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alexis Sedillis. My name is Ian Broderick, and we are your historians for the graduating class of 2021. Our job as class historians is to reminisce in all the memories our grad class has made throughout our many years of elementary and high school. But how do we choose the best memories to share with our audience? Well, for starters, we haven't had a normal grad year by any means thanks to COVID. School dances, no pep rallies, and worst of all, no concession. I was really hoping to buy out the whole place one time. Oh well. I know how disappointed you are, Aiden. But maybe we should start this speech in a different direction, like our memories from Lady Grey. Well, I moved here and joined the party in grade 8, so this one's on you. Alright. I think we can all agree that a very vivid memory from Lady Grey would be our M4L and Zumba classes. A bunch of crazy kids following the instructor's moves, which I'm sure many of you still remember the choreography to, because I still remember Shakira's Waka Waka and Katy Perry's Firework. But the dancing didn't end there. Our class was very enthusiastic when it came to the dance union of Mr. Benke's gym class. My favorite was when the boys and I danced around each other in a circle for the whole duration of the song Tunat Connect. And we can't forget about the grade 10, oh, that's redacted. Let's just move on. You know, I agree. <laughs> I agree that you guys came up with some pretty interesting dance moves, but nothing can ever beat the dance that my group made up to, the song Doncha by the Pussycat Dolls. That whole dance was based around Carson and Jonah wearing wigs and feather boas, and us girls throwing Monopoly money at them while they twerked on a chair. Benty, I still don't know how you let that one slide. Many memorable times took place in Mr. Benty's gym class. There was that time that Grace broke AJ's arm and Karma struck in the form of Matthew Concussion Grayson. <laughs> you can't forget about the golf unit you know, when someone swung their driver a little too hard and cracked Carson's skull open. <laughs> I will never forget that sound. And the funniest part was that the only thing Carson cared about was getting blood on his shoes. His head was split wide open and he cared more about staining his expensive shoes than his own injury. Another chair's class was hockey block. Skating around, shooting pucks, locking each other in the showers, cage raging with the boys, and listening to inspirational speeches from coach. The best practice entailed the vets chasing us while naked, out of the change room, all while the coach watched, in hard. <laughs> now, I have to give a shout out to Mr. Preto because she always organized the best field trips for our grade eight, nine, and 10 French classes. In grade 8, we went to the Enchanted Forest, and in grade 9 and 10, we went to the Calgary Zoo, as well as the mall and a French chocolate store. I don't know how, but after all those Calgary trips, I came home with may way too many bags full of chocolate and clothing, and I hope I'm not the only one. Speaking of the zoo, Lexi, didn't you say you went to the zoo while you were in Lady Grey? That's right, we did. I think the Calgary Zoo is a school field trip favorite, because we also went there in Miss Stolberg's grade 6 class. But this trip was a little different. When it was time to leave the zoo, we lost one of our own, Arvin. We all loaded the bus and started driving away, and as attendance was being taken, Arvin wasn't there anymore. The bus whipped around, and eventually the teachers found Arvin waiting for us in the right spot, but the wrong time. He just had to go see those penguins. While we're on the topic of Arvin, we can't forget about the time. He set the timer on one of the microwaves, to 99 hours and 99 minutes. After that, microwave privileges were revoked for a whole week, and every student in the school had to eat a cold lunch or convince Mr. Badenoch to let us use his. I'm not sure if they ever found the culprit, but the secret is out now. Speaking of Mr. Badenoch, family breakfasts and dinners with our Semester One Foods group this year were something we all look forward to every day, and we'll never forget those aprons. I also want to give a shout out to Ms. Turner because she always wants the best for our, her students. She's given us grade 12s a lot of advice and guidance, which has been really helpful and reassuring for our future endeavors. Not to brag, but I think I was a good student. <laughs> and we can all agree that he definitely got along well with Ms. Turner, but Aiden, I know for a fact you were a part of Mr. Seidemann's inner circle. One thing's for sure is that he ran the best shop classes. Gotta love the time when Matthew accidentally blew off the tip of the torch in metal class and half the kids running like a bomb just went off. <laughs> I'm sure that was a hard one to explain to the principal and Mr. Simon. I'm sorry for all the belt sander races we did. 
<laughs> now, we've covered a lot of memories from the past few years, but the thing we're never going to forget is how our graduating year has been like no other. When COVID first hit last March and schools officially moved to online, I know that most of us were excited to have a six-month summer, but halfway into online classes, we realized how difficult it was going to be. Online classes consisted of most people waking up, logging into Microsoft Teams, and attending class from bed. It was nice a little at first, but we didn't know that COVID would still be around for a whole graduating year. This whole year has been a long ride of not knowing what's coming next, whether it was school being cancelled again, or what we would be able to do for our grad and prom. But in the end, after a lot of hard work and planning, we were able to make sure our class got a special day, considering the circumstances. We want to thank everyone that made this day possible, as well as for our grad class for being patient and positive when it came time to graduate. Let's never forget these memories and hopefully we will all be able to create and share more as we start this new chapter in our lives. Thank, Thank you. you. Alina Raposo and Rala Shaka to the stage. Want to give some 
and thank yous to everyone who has helped us out this year. Thank you to the parents, the Golden Community for Scholarships, the GSS staff, and SD6 operations for setup. We would also like to thank Jenna Leroy, Mrs. Russo, and Mrs. Rondo, and our grant sponsor, Mr. Archibald. We also want to thank Turning Point for being such a big help this year. And finally, we'd like to thank our grad class for being so patient and understanding during all of the unknowns of this year. Thank, thank you. you. This concludes our ceremony for this evening. To our graduates, we would like to congratulate you on your efforts and wish you continued success in wherever life may lead you. For those of you that are viewing our live stream, thank you for tuning in and thank you for Mr. Archibald for producing it. A reminder to the that the live stream is being recorded and a link will be sent out shortly. We ask any graduates who have received awards to please remain in the gym if you would like a photo with, uh, taken by Jenna for, of you. A link to all the photos tonight will be emailed out as soon. Will be emailed out soon, as soon as it is available, so you can download the photos free of charge. At this time, I would like to invite all the graduates to stand up, throw the hats in the air, and thank you all again. Have a great night.